Okay, welcome in, guys. Welcome to the channel. This will be the first video, so I'm so glad to have you here. I'll let this intro play out. As you can see, we are playing Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Originally released in 1992. And there's our hero. All right, Jones. Indian how you gonna right there. statue and all this junk? And... Perfect. Looks like I have control. So, the reason I'm playing this game, um, I feel like we could use a little bit of uh, light-hearted fare, especially nowadays. Uh, never played this game when I was growing up. Uh, we had a computer, but we didn't, uh, we didn't really use it to play too many games. I do remember Lucas film games originally coming out and then eventually changing that name to um, LucasArts. And we did have a couple of LucasArts games uh, growing up, but never played this one. Heard nothing but good things. I hear it is a classic point-and-click adventure, uh, one of the best ever made. So, without further ado, I am Hunk, and uh, this is part one, so let's get it going, guys. We got a statue. Poor Marcus. He thought this was a Maasai warrior. Marcus being his uh, longtime business partner, I believe. Nope. That was fast. That was real fast. Oof. But we are okay. <laughs> and Indy is just going to take a break really quick while we... Oh, there he goes. Okay, and we're back at it. Let's go look at the big crate. The label says unidentified pot shirts. Unidentified pot stickers? That's all I heard. The uh, audio, not the best. Marcus thought Potlatch Indians carved this. Looks like a movie prop to me. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, let's go take a look at the rope. And there we go. Saw that okay. Yeah, we're just gonna wait a couple more seconds here. Let the intro credits play out just a little bit more. For being a 1992 game, it really looks nice. I like it. The colors are on point. I don't know if uh, it depends a whole hell of a lot what type of computer you're uh, using for something older like this, but uh, the MacBook I'm using uh, seems to be playing it just fine. I don't need them. They're just textbooks. Uh, books on pots, books on tools. I think I've read them all. Sites, statues. Well, let's look at books on weapons here. There's nothing of importance here. Fair enough. There's nothing of importance here. Okay. These books don't look familiar. Uh-oh. <clears throat> okay. We're in the basement now. A lot of, uh... Intro credits here. You better get that roof checked. <laughs> okay, what do we got in here? Got cat figurines. Got a coal chute. Oh gosh, I don't know. Let's go look at the coal chute. Why not? Looks pretty slippery. <laughs> okay, look at the cat figurines. Possibly an ancient Mesopotamian cat god. <laughs> and there we go. Down the coal chute. Very nice. <laughs> Doug Lee as Indy. Very cool. Okay. It's hot. 
a fine sample of bitumen. Oh, jeez. Gonna make me choose. I'll be. Here's what I've been searching for. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up. So I had to look this up at the uh, scum system uh, that you just saw on the screen there. Apparently stands for Script Creation Utility for Maniac Mansion. Um, apparently it's a game engine developed at LucasArts. Um, while they were working on their first game, Maniac Mansion. I'm back! Indy? You don't look at all well, Dr. Charles. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Tell me. Did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Why not? It's an obvious fake. You may think so, Doctor, but I believe we are opening a new chapter in history. My word, India, a small metal bead. Jewelry, perhaps? I still think it's a fake. Then you won't mind if I take it. Really, Mr. Smith? Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car waiting. You'll need one. Hmm. What is this? Well, damn. He got away. But we got his coat, Marcus. Hey, what's this? Klaus Kerner, huh? Good lord, Indy. The man's some sort of agent from the Third Reich. What is the spy one with the Buddhist statue? <sighs> I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a phony. I can't place the style, but it's old. Look what else our friend was carrying. An old copy of National Archaeology. And there you are in Iceland. Am I supposed to be yeah, a Yeah, field supervisor for the Jastro expedition. My first real job. Who's the woman? Sophia Hapgood. She was my assistant. A spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. But where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. How odd. You can say that again. Indy, Kerner found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. Okay, so I guess we're going from Barnett College to New York City. Okay. Looks like we got some options here. So yeah, I guess we just walk around, click on things, and uh, progress the story if we can. Nope. Okay. Thought he was gonna say something. Maybe not. Oh, look at. Okay. Let's try. Look at. No. Look at. Okay. Fair enough. Talk to. Hello there. There we go. The show sold out, sir. Oh shit. Okay. Now wait. No seats, no standing room, no exception. Okay, so I guess we're not getting in front. So we can use walk to and use the taxi if we need to. Let's keep looking around just a little bit. Let's look at the newspaper to see if this gives us a clue. It's today's paper. 
This was taken a long while ago, when I thought we might like each other. It's weird seeing Harrison Ford's face with this voice. I can't make a call. I'm out of nickels. Oh, well, okay then. Get out of the phone booth. Okay, so when you highlight certain things, it's like the possible actions here light up. So, you guys get to bear with me while I stumble my way through this. We'll figure out what we're doing. Eventually. Okay, why don't we try going over here. Alright, looks like we got a side door. Anything else back here? Just a bunch of crates, it looks like. Now well, let's try opening it, why not? Hmm, it's unlocked. What do you want, pal? This ain't no ticket office. Okay. I'm here to enjoy Madame's outrageous orations. I'm here to fix your lights, let me in, you Darwinian nightmare. Go with this. I'm here to fix the lights. There's nothing wrong with the lights. Now shove off. Okay. Wait a minute. Why won't you take no for an answer? I really need to talk to your star. That's what they all say, Mac. It's a matter of life and it's Nazis. It's a matter of life and Nazis. Life and what? On second thought. Good night. Don't take any wooden nickels. <laughs> okay. There's got to be some way to talk my way in. Got it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Open. Here I go again. You again? Now what? I'm here to enjoy Madam's outrageous orations. This ain't that kind of show. Honestly, I'm not even sure what orations means. I'd have to look that one up myself. Postulates on stage. Oh, of course not. Madam Sophia is a serious thinker. Don't kid around, pal. You're talking about my idol. No kidding. I think she's the greatest. Me too. There's something about her. Hey, building rapport. How about that? Yeah, she's very pretty. Got a great cerebrum. Very smart. Obfuscate. I need a dictionary to play this game. Yeah, she's very smart. Smart? I'll say. You know what I really like? It's the way she... she... Probably not going to go for the first one. Tosses her head when she laughs. Go with this one. The way she makes things easy to understand? That's it. All that smart stuff seems so easy when I'm listening to her. Say, you're okay for a college boy. Come on in. Alrighty, well there you go, guys. Okay, wow. Really kind of let me right up on stage here. Well, let's see what we can do. Probably don't want to walk to Sophia quite yet, just in front of all these people here. So let's. Yeah, why not? Let's talk to Stagehand. Excuse me. Aha! You must be the new doorman. About time they got rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. Biff, that's fitting. I want a reading with Miss. Cat dude, I need to talk to that so-called psychic. Probably not the best option there. Call that fraud. Okay. I want a reading with Miss Hapgood. Are you crazy? During the show? Write a letter. All right. Well, let's try talking. Excuse me. Take it easy and this watch the show. Moment. Here, my friend, is Atlantis as it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, prosperous, 
spiritually and technically advanced beyond our wildest dreams. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. Okay. Well, let's see what else we can do here. Walk to the right lever, middle lever, left lever. Walk to button. Hmm. Wait! Oh. She's just coming to the exciting part. Okay. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher, or the earth itself suddenly shifting? However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens on that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sal, is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Okay. What next? What next? Try walking over here again. Wait! Wait. She's still talking. Okay. Don't see a whole hell of a lot of other options here. So yeah, let's walk to Sophia. Wait! Hmm? She's still talking. Can't do that. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? <laughs> My damn told me to tell you you're fired. Um, isn't there something you'd rather be doing? You know, this lecture bores me stiff. Again, probably not going to want to go with the uh, smart ass remarks here. You look tired, wouldn't you like to? Well, sure. You look tired. Wouldn't you like to call it a day? Nah, sooner or later I get to run the ghost out there. That's always a big moment. <sighs> okay. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Madam told me to tell you you're fired. What? You can't fire me! Okay, apparently that was the right, uh, the right branch to take. Oh no, take a look at my union card. Take a look at my driver's license. Take a look at my wallet. Hmm. Oh no, take a look at my union card. Stop pestering me and watch the show, will ya? Shit. Okay, well... Hey! Nope, still can't She's go still talking. Stage. Yeah, I got it. Okay, here we go. Um... Hold on! Nope. She's still talking. Okay. Clearly we need to talk to you, good sir. We just need the right, uh... Excuse me. Yeah, what now? The right answer, sir. Isn't there something you'd rather be doing? Like what? Show business is my whole life! Don't you ever get bored? She does rattle on, but I've got a job to do. Oh my gosh. Come on. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Don't you have any hobbies? Sure, I read. What if I give you something to read? I might take a look. Why do I keep looking at her? Okay, well, I think we picked this one last time. What if I give you something to walk away? What if I give you something to walk away? A bribe? Who do you think you're talking to? Nope. Okay. I'm gonna crack this. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Don't you have any hobbies? 
Sure, I read. Too bad I don't have anything to offer. Stop pestering me and watch the show, will ya? Alright. Hopefully this will be the last Excuse time. me. Yeah, what now? Don't you ever read? Sure, it's a hobby of mine. But what if I give you something to read? I might take a look. Okay. Hold on! She's still talking. Alright, I don't think there's a whole hell of a lot uh, left for us to do, but why don't we try looking at... Wait! Nope. She's still talking. Let's see, look at... Nope, okay. Well, guys, I don't think there's a whole hell of a lot more for us to do, unless I'm just missing something. Why don't we go over here? Something in this crate. I can open it. Doesn't seem to open. No, of course not. Okay. Ooh, walk the fire escape. Looks like it might lead backstage. Okay, let's walk. I can't get there from here. The way looks blocked. Oh, okay. Well. Oh, well, how about that? The way looks blocked. Oh my gosh. There we go. Oh my gosh. It only took me about five minutes to figure that out. Wait! She's still talking. Oh god. That didn't even do anything. And we're right back where Wait. we started. She's still talking. What the hell is this thing? Is that like a, a ghost? Alright, so we're back where we started. Let's go back to the exit here. Might be something outside that I'm just not seeing. Oh, okay. Get out. Let's try picking up the newspaper. There we go. Alright, see if this guy wants to read the newspaper. Oh my god, just go inside. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright, back to this guy. Why don't we give newspaper... It's today's paper. No, give newspaper to stage Here. Well, well, the late edition. I wonder if the Dodgers won. Watch the lights while I find out, okay? Alright, there we go. Finally. Let's go over here. It's a lever. It appears to control this ghostly stage prop. There you go. All right, well, let's go ahead and let's break up this uh, presentation here. Hmm, nothing happened. Okay. Oh, let's try pulling some levers. It won't go any further in that direction. Oh, okay, push. Let's try pushing the levers here. What is that? What did that do? All right, let's try pushing the button. It appears to control this ghostly stage prop. Now push the button. Hmm, nothing happened. Okay, back to square one here. Let's push a couple more levers. It's a lever. That's nice. Appreciate that. That did something. Let's try pushing the last one. Oh my gosh. Push the button. Hmm, nothing happened. Nope, okay. Well, let's try... Okay, green again. Green means go, which means ghosty. 
There it goes. There we go. And I still feel the presence of Atlantis through... Uh... May I present Nurab Sal, the great Atlantean god of... of... Deceit. Deceit. Thanks, Cindy. What Indiana Jones! That? You've got some nerve. Go back, you big jack-o'-lantern. Okay. Oh, great. Good night, folks. <laughs> Can you hear the music? Burp, 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 burp. Come on, mister. I've got a few words to mince with you. I'd say it's about time. Yeah, I would too. Oh, no! Looks like Kerner got here first. Stay put. Kerner being the German-sounding individual from the beginning. No one here. A.K.A. Mr. Smith. Nor here either. I'm sorry, what were we looking for? Oh. Dr. Uberman. Fantastic news. We found the treasure we see. Sorry if you guys can't understand that super well. I wish there were subtitles, but having a hard time making out everything. That's the second time Kerner slipped away. What does a Nazi spy want with old statues? Have you seen the newspaper? Listen to this. Germans claim victory in worldwide race to smash the uranium atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Ubermann announces plan to harness new sources of energy for the Third Reich. So? I'll get back to the branching options here. Okay, practical results are years away. Come on, a few atoms won't even light a match. They'll never find enough uranium. Sounds like they're dreaming to me. Hmm. Practical results are years away. Of course they are. That's why they're looking for the power of Atlantis. Be serious. I used to think you'd make a good scientist. All right, yeah, you've been concealing important artifacts, stole things from my expedition, been dealing goods on the black market, or publish the word about your finds. Hmm. That's a little too accusatory. Ooh, there we go. Yet you never published a word about your finds. Artifacts such as archaeology has never seen. Huh. You're lucky I don't have you arrested. Well, that was fast. So what if I kept a few pieces for myself? Look for a small coppery bead under those clippings in my desk. What do you know? Kerner missed the grand prize. What? My necklace. Watch closely. The bead is made of auric calcum, the mystery metal first mentioned by Plato. Now I'll place it in the medallion's mouth. Oh, oh, God. Did you see that? Yeah, creepy. Is your electric bill paid up? That was Nurab Sal. His spirit is close. Nur, huh, what? Okay. Closer than Atlantis, that's for sure. Suppose I gave this aura calcum business any credence, which I don't. We have no idea where to find your mythical lost city. Atlantis has been underwater for centuries. Who knows where these beads really came from? You may have just used the last bead. Well, I figure if we say this, she might be like, no, on the contrary. We have no idea where to find your mythical lost city. Shh. I'm getting something. 
Narab Sal speaks. He bids us find the... What? Oh, a book, yes. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. Another fine man. Uh, let's see if Plato wrote it. Later authors would have reported it. And Plato just wanted to tell a tall tale. It's not in any library I've ever been in. If Plato wrote it, later Why authors not? would have reported it. What if the Nazis have already found a copy? You ever uh -huh. think of that? Hmm. Uh, let's see. You found this stuff in Iceland, right? Yes, near our old dig site. I thought so. Who's working there these days? Bjorn Heimdall, I believe. Maybe we should pay him a visit. What do you say? I thought you'd never ask. Perfect. Well, totally did that on purpose. Okay. Just a quick uh, hop, skip, and a jump from New York to Iceland. And here we are. And he's back in his uh, traditional hat. And, okay. It's a great place to uh, end part one, guys. Um, like I said, the point of the playthrough, uh, obviously not uh, going to be any sort of a walkthrough. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so we might, uh, might need a little bit of uh, editing here, but uh, we all got to start somewhere, right? Um, really enjoying this so far. I will be back very soon with part two.